Hello everybody, Ian Robson here, welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. So today we are taking a Liebner, or Liebner, um, bulldozer, there we go. <laughs> I think about the word, I'm like, uh, bulldozer? Uh, so we're taking a bulldozer, uh, we are currently in, da 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 da, Berlin, and we're going to Hamburg, in Germany. My favorite place to drive in this game. So let's go ahead and get this fired up. So we already have the job, as you can see. And we're going to go ahead and get on the road. All right. Take the parking brake off. That's always helpful. Start the truck. That is also helpful. It's funny. I always end up doing that in this truck for whatever reason. I'll always... Because, like, I have a button set up for uh, starting... What it'll do is it'll turn the electronics on. Is like, one button. And then... Turn the engine on is another button, and I always end up screwing it up for some reason. There's a stop sign here. No one's there. No one's. Oh, there's somebody there. Of course, someone starts coming around the corner as soon as you start going. Oh my goodness! In the truck, always, always in the truck. All right, so let's get going here. Looks like we're safe to go on that side. Excellent. And I'm gonna bring up my mirror because I can't see anything on that side unless I look. Excellent. Sweet. So this is of course the Peterbilt once again. I do love this truck. I think what I might do is next time I uh next time I I almost said race there for a second. Race. You don't race a Peter. Well, maybe you do in some places. I know they do have truck racing, so it's not impossible to race a Peterbilt. Oh, really? Um, so, it's not impossible, but unlikely, let's just say that. Alright, hopefully this light changes soon. Hopefully be in the keyword. Oh, there we go, perfect. Make this turn nice and wide. So this trailer isn't nearly as long as the last one we took. The last one was quite a long trailer. This one is still long, but not as long, so... I don't think, I think this one actually is a bit, uh... Let's make sure we're in the right lane here. I think this one is a bit lighter too, uh, if I had to guess. I think it's around 30 tons. Uh, does it say up there? No. PR764. Whatever that is. The backhoe we're taking. Or not the backhoe, the bulldozer, sorry. Anyhow, so yeah, I'm kind of curious to see uh, this pack. Uh, like I said before in the last episode, uh, Farmer Viewers was the one who recommended trying out this heavy hauling pack. He's the one who generally has all the good uh, good mods or knows about them at the very least, especially for Euro Truck right now, because he's super into Euro Truck at the moment. He is just enjoying the game like there's no tomorrow. Although he did, he is he is switching between Euro Truck and uh, he's switching between Euro Truck and Farming Simulator, so he's going between the two of those. There we go, perfect. But I don't blame him. Euro Truck's a pretty awesome game. It's hard to get away from it sometimes. Especially when you get into like a Euro Truck mode too. You get to like situations where you're kind of like really enjoying yourself. You're like, yeah. like, And you just, you can just find yourself, you know, trucking for a good, a good, you know, couple hours at the very least. Really, car? Come on. I signaled like way back there. A good couple hours easily. Oh, well, of course, we're turning right again anyways. Um, so you can just find yourself trucking for a good couple hours really easily. At least that's what I find. Um, I've done that more than once. Uh, when I when I first got Euro Truck, that was like that all the time. I would be like la 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 la. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I should go to bed soon. <laughs> done that once or twice. And the same thing applied for when I picked up the uh, Russian map uh, in this game for the very first time. I did the same thing. I was just like, I'm like, hmm, what's this? And I just you know found myself messing around in the game for extended periods of time. I'm sure it'll be the same thing in. Uh, in American Truck Simulator when that comes out. It'll be one of those situations where you'll just, you'll commit to like an afternoon or something like that, or like an evening, and just enjoy yourself. Because it's gonna be really interesting to see what they include. As far as I know, um, they're only included, I think, including in California, I believe, is the very first thing they're including, so. It will be interesting to see how that plays out, that's for sure. So, I don't know. I'm excited. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether they include some older trucks, actually, or older Peterbilts is what I'm thinking of. Uh, but I, I'm not sure if they're going to have only the newer ones, uh, or if they're going to have, like, 
old ones as well, which would be kind of nice to see like a, you know, some of the older style trucks like this style, for example, this Peterbilt. Uh, this is a three, not 379, but 389, I believe. Uh, and this one was made, I think, up until 2004, I believe. So the newer, I find a lot of the newer trucks are like more like, uh, how would I say it? They don't have like the solid, they don't have like the rigid lines or like the right angles, I guess I, I'm thinking of. They have more of like a, a curve as opposed to like a straight edge. So like if we look at this truck, if I can do this carefully. So we look at this truck. You can see it has some like where the grill is. It has like very like straight edges, and then on the fenders there's like cur like nice lines. So like the new Peterbilts have like the curved fenders all the way around basically. So which look looks a bit different, uh, but like on where the grill is right now, they have like a I don't know. It like starts and then kind of rolls back slowly as opposed to the straight edge. I don't know. I prefer the straight edge like this truck has, which is why I like this truck so much. I've always liked cars like that as well. Uh, often you'll see cars, uh, some of the older cars, like from the 70s, uh, I guess it would be in the 70s and 80s maybe, you see a lot more cars with uh, the straighter edges, and I really like those ones. That's one of, one of the reasons why I like the Buick Grand National, because it's got lots of nice edges like that. Whereas the newer cars are more floy, more aerodynamic. They look nicer, so. Well, they don't look nice all the time, but they're more aerodynamic, so. And some people might say they look better. Some people might say they not might not look better. So it really depends. I uh, depends on the car for me. Some cars look nice. Some cars don't look nice. Like I remember when they first brought out the what was it? Uh, when they first brought, I think it was the, one of the Chrysler cars. Uh, I think it was maybe the 300 or something like that. And I thought that was kind of an interesting design choice because it was one of those things where. Uh, Carter activated. Gotcha. It's one of those things where it's like it looks nice, and they're going for like an older style, but it didn't quite uh, didn't quite work out for everybody. It worked out for some people, and they liked it a lot. Other people, not so much. I've seen some nice Chrysler 300s done up, mind you, but not my preferred car. Although I do like driving the Chrysler 200. I've driven that many times, well, not many times, but a few times now, uh, when I've rented a car, and I like driving that one. It's really good on fuel, if memory serves as well. So. It's one of those situations where uh, I had to rent a car because I was going somewhere, visiting somebody, and so I rented a car. It's funny whenever you go, go to rent a car for the well, when you go to rent a car, once you get to know the people there, you can kind of they can kind of ask you like, okay, what do you want to drive today, sort of idea. And uh, sometimes they'll give you uh, the car you want at the price you want, sometimes, but not always. Oh, this is our turn. This is the turn we're supposed to make, the Hamburg. Hit that jig break. A lot of times, I think the one, um, I tend to hear jig breaks a lot with uh, dump trucks. Is what I tend to hear it the most with. Because you see a lot of dump trucks around town, uh, you know, due to construction right now. There's a crazy amount of construction here. And, uh, because of that, you see dump trucks all over the place, and you also get to hear their jake breaks, which is kind of fun, actually. So, uh, Especially if you like the sound of it. I personally like the sound of it, so it uh, makes me want to be like, ah, let's go play Euro Truck. Uh, where was I? The other day I was walking past the truck, and it was a Kenworth, one of the newer Kenworths. Gorgeous looking truck. Uh, grill was all chrome on it. Looked really, really nice. I should have stamped the picture, but I think I was going to be late for work if I stopped for any, any longer. But it was a really nice... Uh, nice truck they had. It was actually a, what do you call it, a rigid body truck, I guess is what you would refer to it as, but uh, it was like a newer Kenworth. Looked really nice, actually. I don't know, maybe I just have a thing for chrome, chrome grills on cars and trucks, who knows, but. All right, so looks like we're coming up to our destination soon. I don't think we're too far off. I don't think, at least, but we're going to find out, I suppose. I know this wasn't a super long journey. I think it was only about 160 kilometers or so. So in real world, in real world time, it was about an hour and a half, two hours, depending on uh, the speed and whatnot. Like in Germany, I suppose you could take the autobahn and be there, you know, in under an hour, I suppose. But I'd be a little concerned driving that fast. I've never driven. I generally don't drive super fast, so I think if I were to go on the autobahn, I would be, you know, just 
a little bit scared. I'm not gonna lie to you. Just a little bit because you know you can drive as fast as you want, basically. You know, do 160 kilometers an hour without a problem. And uh, if you're, let's say, if you're in a, like a an older car, 160 kilometers is a little scary to do in an older car because uh, they start shaking and stuff. And oh man, it's not fun. You don't even have to go up to 160 kilometers an hour to experience that. You can do like 100 kilometers an hour, and some of the older cars will start shaking once you hit that 100-kilometer limit. It's really <laughs> kind of like, ah, this is fun, and you're like, no, it's not. Uh, what I really appreciate about, appreciate about newer cars these days is how quiet they are when you're doing 100 kilometers an hour because some of the older cars, like I was saying, are not fun to be in when, they're, when you're doing like 100 kilometers plus, whereas the new cars, you can be doing like 120 and just not feel and just you know enjoy the ride basically you don't you don't even feel like you're doing 120 some of the older cars you really got to grip the steering wheel and like just hold on to it because it feels like you're holding on to dear life basically because of uh, how it reacts when you go that speed and sometimes it's due to stuff like alignment and whatnot uh, that could be the reason right so it just depends it just depends I don't know some of the older cars I've driven I, have, I don't think I've driven too many older cars uh, from the 80s or 90s uh, up to 100 kilometers an hour. I used, I, what my parents used to have an old, oh, what was that car? My dad used to have a Pontiac Parisian, which is an old boat of a car. I drove that a little bit. That was a, that was interesting to drive, to say the least. I remember I had a good stereo, or what I thought was a good stereo at that time, so often we would listen to the music louder than it should have been. But I didn't drive it very much. But it was a, it was a boat of a car. Like nowadays, even if you see one, like a car that's similar to that, uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just Google uh, Pontiac Parisian, uh, and you'll see the size of it. But it was like you know, V8 on the f like V8 full size, uh, full size trunk as well. It was just just a monster. But even if you see one of those types of cars, anything that looks close to that these days, you're like, oh my goodness. I'm like, that's the first time I've seen that car in a long time. Like every now and then I'll see, I'll see somebody with one of those cars. I'm like, how do they afford to fuel that sucker? Because those things are just beasts. Maybe it's not as bad as it seems. Like I guess if you own the car as opposed to financing or leasing the car, then I guess you're not paying the, the monthly payments and it's not as bad. So you may pay a little bit more in fuel, but you're not paying for, uh, uh, oops. Sorry, buddy. You're not paying for uh, payments every single time, so I don't know. I still like taking the bus. Just me personally, though. And that's usually because I like reading, so I do a lot of random reading. I read all my video game literature on the bus, and I read all my uh, tech news and all that jazz, so it's all on the bus. So I guess that's why I like taking the bus. A lot of people are just like, no, I'm good. No bus for me. I, I, I'll forego it, uh, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it as long as you know within reason. Usually, like what happens is, in the summers when I start to not enjoy it as much because you're on the bus for like an hour and it's warm on the bus and you're like just dying of heat and you're like, oh, I just want to get off and you know go to sleep is what I usually you end up feeling like it's just so warm on the bus. But that's how I feel about it sometimes. Oh, I totally just dinged that truck back there. <laughs> didn't get a ticket or anything for that time, but I totally dinged it. I don't know if you saw that in the rear view mirror, but I totally like, jumped. Oh, sorry, sorry. Move into the inside lane now. Got a quick coffee break here. Well, oh, that's what happens when you take a coffee break. Distracted driving. That is why you're not allowed to text and drive in real life. Because that's what would happen. You would you wouldn't necessarily make any kind of big move, big mistakes. It might just be a small drift and just enough to make a, a big enough accident. Like in reality, if that happened, <laughs> if that happened with one of these trucks, like you just drifted into the next lane, uh, and, there, and you a car got underneath your tires, it would just be bad news bears. That's for sure. But it, you know, it happens from time to time. I believe in Europe they have very strict guidelines for driving, and I think you're only allowed to drive. Um, 12 hours I think it is that's the maximum you can drive uh, in a day and they actually have like uh, discs type a, ty a disc type scenario where they actually monitor how long the driver has been driving for or how long the truck has been in motion and I believe they can actually lock up the truck and stuff if uh, 
if it's been going for too long. So crazy stuff like that. It's pretty amazing though. It keeps the road safe, a safer place, I guess. Although it does make a lot of red tape. So if you are a trucker, you're probably like, uh, it's a little bit too much red tape for me, which is understandable. But uh, I guess the, the idea is they're just trying to keep the road safe in the end. But I can imagine it would present a few problems if you had to deal with that, all that paperwork and all that red tape on a regular basis. But I think we're good. Do we need a downshift? Yeah, it's downshift. Probably didn't need to do that, but that's fine. Being on the outside lane <laughs> means I take up two lanes, really. I guess, I don't know how that would work in real life. I wonder. There we go, good. That's the kind of thing I always end up wondering in this game is like, now how would they do this in real life versus in the game? Like I've seen some pretty ridiculous things sometimes uh, in the game and in real life because, uh, you know, the space, I've, I've actually seen some guy, like he was making like a left turn and he could, he wasn't turning sharply enough. So he actually had to back up in the middle of the intersection and adjust himself so he could actually, uh, so he could actually make the turn. That's rare to see that, but I was pretty surprised when I did see it. I was like, whoa, that, that can't be kosher. Oh, I should have really checked my mirrors a bit better there. Uh, but it was one of the, it was very odd. I was like, huh, I'm like, I wonder if he uh, just didn't engage that, that turn right. Oh, well. One of the other funny things is um, where my bus goes across, I go across a, uh, a truck driving school so often I'll see uh, people learning how to dr drive truck which is kind of interesting I have a feeling I'm cutting coming into the city so I should probably slow down yeah anyways so like I go past this truck driving school so often I'll see people like learning how to drive truck for the very first time and it's really interesting to see uh, to see how good they are or how nervous they are, like making a turn, like make, making a left turn in a truck. Oh man, some of the time I'd be like, uh, I'd be a little, I'd be a little concerned. For some reason, I, I, I once thought about uh, doing truck driving school, but it's a little expensive, and uh, I'm not sure if I enjoy school. I don't, I've enjoyed truck driving that much in order to do it in real life. One of the guys I follow on Twitch, actually, he. Uh, he actually uh, wanted to do it. Uh, his name's Geek Domo. He actually was oh, really come on. He wanted to be a truck driver, so he actually uh, he couldn't do it for some random reason in the end. Uh, but he uh, he was playing Euro Truck as a, like a practice, uh, which is interesting because you can technically use this game for practice pretty much, really. Like they did a pretty good job of making it a. Making it a simulator enough. And the cool thing about this game, in my opinion, is the fact that if you want to make it more simulator, you can. Or if you want to make it less simulator, you can. Which I really appreciate because not every game will do that. Sometimes we'll have it like one extreme and you can't, uh, you can't kind of reduce the uh, simulator side of things. Like iRacing, for example, as far as I know iRacing is like, you no know, 100% or 0%. Either you play it at, as a 100% simulator or you don't play it at all, basically. As far as I know, that's how it's played. Now, I've never... I've never played iRacing, and I don't think I would have... Uh, I don't think I could do it, because I don't... Uh, there's too many times where I am... Uh, playing a game where I'm not playing realistically or I make a mistake or something like that because in iRacing you're paying for that game on a monthly basis oh look at that light nice you're paying for iRacing on a monthly basis and if you make a mistake then what will happen they will actually like you know kick you out of the race or ban you so it's not like a simple situation like usually like you can you can you know basically lose lose the money you spent to a certain extent. I don't know how that side of thing works, but excellent, sweet. So my 350 kilometers, very nice. Cool. All right, that's it for me for today, folks, I guess. This has been another episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2. We were, today we were taking a bulldozer to Hamburg. And uh, yeah, that'll be it for me for today. My name's Ian Robson. 
If you enjoy yourself, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Catch you guys later.